Yeah, all right. Well, another month. And even though it still feels so surreal to try to continue to move on in life without Tammy, I mean, we don't really have any other choice. It's already about halfway through the first year of our life here on Votumna, and I feel like we do want to go ahead and start really working on trying to focus on some sort of area and become a little bit stronger, especially because one day I want to actually work in the geo... like, well, uh, alright, I thought I wanted to work in geophonics, but now I kind of feel like I need to explore. I need to understand why this happened, and that could have taken me in engineering like with Tang, but I just feel like the answers might be out there somewhere, which means... I do need to potentially get my combat up and my bravery, but, well, we'll just have to see what today's adventures have for us. But all right, my friends, welcome back to Fertumna, where, as Sol Syria, we are carrying on with the 10th year of our life, and I hope that everything's going a little bit better with our friend Cal. Yeah. Cal's mom, Trish, is sitting with Cal against the makeshift fence that surrounds the garden. Cal looks absolutely shattered, and Tira rubs his back. Desk colors Trish, sorry about that. He sees you and musters up a brave smile that doesn't quite reach his eye. His eyes, oh my gosh, sorry. I'm just so flustered because I'm so sad for Cal. <laughs> it's really like, ugh, it just hits me so hard. Okay, so we can't give him another gift because it's too soon. I don't actually have biology 20 yet. I absolutely feel like that's something I have to go ahead and work on uh, so that I can, I can share these cool facts with them. So we're at biology 16, so maybe we will be able to go ahead and, like, advance the biology today. Anything new from dad? If your mom already said no, I agree with her, your dad says without looking up from his work. I know you two disagree about things, but she's still your mom. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. I love how we just ran up to him and he's just immediately like, if your mom said no, that's what she said. Alright, yeah, mom, meanwhile, she's just talking about all the usual. I think. And then dies is sitting on the ground just outside the gate, under the watchful eye of someone working in expeditions. We're just as stuck here as we were on the ship, he mumbles, but he doesn't say anything else after that. And then, does this interest you? Aw oh, man, I don't have a collectible to offer. All right, maybe I could find another one? Uh, maybe if they let us out, I could find more things to be able to bring back to my friends that hopefully would just be fun and interesting items and not something that would end up getting them killed, uh, but still. Mars? Uh, yeah, she's still waiting. Yeah, the depot store won't open until next year. Okay. Well, our stress went down because we participated in the festival, and it doesn't look like anyone else has too much extra to tell us. Hey, and we could actually go ahead and study with Tang at some point. I might see if I can get my reasoning up so we can do that. Tangent looks up at the sky and shades her eyes. It's too bright, she complains, and it's too hot, and the nights are cold. Living on the stratosphere meant we never had to experience discomfort. Remind me, why aren't we putting all our resources into repairing the ship? Repairing is also a strong word, but the ship is clearly broken in half. So that's actually a good question, too. Um, I can't register for engineering classes, but we could get a little bit more reasoning and our biology from studying life sciences, or we could get creativity and persuasion. We're going to focus on life sciences again, I think. Hey, writing an essay! <gasps> cool! Wow, is that Mars as a teenager? Oh my gosh! <laughs> this week in biology class, you're studying sugar bugs. This native species looks like a purple, look like purple marshmallows about the size of your fist, all puffy and squishy and kind of cute. They don't move or do much, but if you tickle them, they exclude an edible syrup from a hole at the top of their bodies. And now, says Professor Hal, you're going to dissect one. Uh, so we could do dissecting a sugar bug that makes Tangent really happy and it has like a little a little gemstone Or we could do writing an essay where plus one if the card is a mental card I think we're gonna refuse to do it on ethical grounds because like we've never even like eaten animal meat. It's like Not that kind of society. So ethical grounds Instead, you and Cal write an essay about the strange creatures. Oh, I have a little bit of rebellion! Cal looks relieved. I'm taking my home with me, he says, petting it sweetly. It spurts a bit of syrup, and Cal laughs. I think that means she's happy. 
While researching the essay, you learn that sugar bugs can actually regenerate after being cut in tiny pieces. That's how it reproduces! Your teacher was probably planning to surprise you with that fact. The morning after the dissection, the classroom is filled with whole happy sugar bugs once more. <laughs> but I'm still proud we decided to go ahead and be cautious on that for ethical grounds. That, that felt right. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So let's go ahead and then we'll arrange them. Uh oh. Oh boy, I need to, okay, I needed to pay a little bit more attention to that. Let's get a line up there. That's so powerful. You cannot like ignore the fact that you really have to play your cards right. Just clicking through on them real fast is not gonna help you. All right, we got an extra to biology and a little bit more to reasoning. It feels like it's so hard to get reasoning up though. Hey, at least we're in late dust now. We're getting closer to the end of our very first year. Let's see. I guess now that the big things have happened, time just seems to be going on a little faster. Cal? You're looking for Cal in the garden when you nearly trip over someone else, one of the younger kids, and they're blindfolded? Hey, they exclaim, ripping the blindfold off their face and throwing it to the ground. It's Cirrus, one of an enemy's brothers. He glares at you. I was almost done. Cal jogs over and grabs Cirrus in a friendly headlock, ruffling his messy red hair. Dude, you were so close. Cirrus stamps his feet and complains that you got in his way. It's not her fault, Cal says. She didn't know we were playing a game. Give me a second. I want to teach her how to play. Cal turns to you as Cirrus leaves. Sorry, Solceria, he says sheepishly. I was teaching Cirrus a new game, but he is more like an enemy than I thought. Real competitive, you know? He stoops to pick up the blindfold, brushing off the dirt. I've been trying to come up with different kinds of games, others in sports ball, he says. No winners or losers. I just want to have fun with my friends. Cal looks at you hopefully. Do you want to learn how to play? Uh, yes, absolutely. I'm so happy to see him wanting to go ahead and play. Cal's smile looks like it's going to stretch right off his face. Radical, he shouts, jumping up and down in excitement. Okay, so first put on this blindfold. The blindfold is a little scratchy and smells like dirt. You can feel Cal's big hands on your shoulders. I'm gonna spin you around and when I let go, you gotta listen to my instructions. We're gonna walk all the way to the cafeteria, okay? You nod. You can't see Cal's grin, but you can hear it in his voice as he spins you around and counts to 10. One, two, three. First, you gotta walk forward 10 steps. Do you follow Cal's instructions as best you can or make things difficult for him? We're gonna do our best. Like. I'm still very tender in my heart about Tammy, so I want to do our best and try to work with him. You take 10 steps forward, holding your hands out for balance. The rocky dirt between the garden beds crunches under your feet. Yeah! Now, turn to your right and make 15 steps until you get to the door. Oh, look at that! So we can get it right because we have empathy 10 or greater. You turn to the right and walk forward, counting out 15 steps. When you stop, Cal laughs. You can hear his footsteps crunching behind you. I forgot how much bigger I am than you. You're like two more steps away. You take two more steps until your outstretched hands land on the warm metal of the door. Success! Awesome, Cal says. You can't help but smile. This is fun. Now hit the door button on the right and then keep walking forward until I say stop. Go really slowly, okay? <laughs> this is cute. He really doesn't want to get anybody hurt. You open the door and start to walk forward. The path slopes downward and your feet slip a little, even though you're moving as slowly as you can. Real dirt is nothing like the middle floors of the stratospheric. It's turbo rocky here, Cal says, and you can feel the uneasiness prickle up the back of your arms. Just keep going forward slowly. All right, I'm so glad we have Empathy 20. We're gonna trust him. You slowly creep down the slope to the center of the colony, somehow managing not to bump into everything. Cal cheers. Okay, now turn a little to your right and keep walking straight. We're so close. You carefully walk forward, stopping when you hear Mars's unmistakable voice ring across the courtyard. What are you null heads doing? Cal tells her you're playing a game. Is that a real game? Mars scoffs. It looks like Solceria is just wandering around with a scarf over her eyes. Aren't you a little old for that? I want to ignore her, but I don't have enough bravery. Why do I not have enough bravery? Ugh. Oh. Embarrassment burns in your belly as you tear off the blindfold. Blinking away tears in the sun brightness, you can see Mars looking down her nose at you. Mars sneers, tossing her braids over her shoulder. I thought you were cooler, Solceria. Let me know when you're ready to play some adult games. You're not sure what she meant by that. 
You become aware of Cal standing behind you. Sorry, Solceria, he says quietly. I guess it is kind of a silly game. You ask if he wants to get some Watoto juice from the cafeteria instead. You spend the afternoon brainstorming ideas for more games with no winners or losers. Oh, Cal! This is why I love spending time with him! Mars, you were being a jerk. Oh, hi, Solceria. Marzipan looks bored. My dad's made me come out here to get some fresh air. Don't know what's so fresh about it. It's always full of acid snow or pollen or water, and I don't know which is worse. Mars, you're, you're in my bad books right now. Ugh, it still hurts to run past the, the place where Tammy should be. Have you gone outside the colony yet? Tang asks you. I hear all sorts of terrible things. Regardless, we're not allowed to stray from the gates unless we're on expedition. Tang rolls her eyes. Not that that stops my brother. Oof. And then, man, I want to get more bravery. I want to get more bravery and be brave and be able to go ahead and like help people do things. But like, you need a lot of each one of these. It's it's like, we're still working on biology and we're only barely at 20 soon. And then I think we're gonna do 20 biology and then I'm gonna become brave because that's the other thing I want to really do. And, <laughs> and an enemy is still, okay. An enemy is running around the sports ball court, touching her hand to the ground at each corner. 18? She counts 19! When she reaches 20, she collapses into the grass and checks her hollow palm. I'm training, she explains. My big bro calm says I have to get my legs climatized to the planet if I'm gonna be team captain like him. <laughs> Aww. Alright, that's pretty cute. Where's Dyes? Oh good, he's over here. Dyes? Yeah, he's, he's just bored because he feels stuck here. Alright. So I think, yeah, our stress isn't too high. So let's go ahead and go straight into life sciences. You ask a question in class and are embarrassed when everybody laughs. You guess it was something you were supposed to know? You thought Professor Hal said there were no dumb questions. All right, let's get to work. I think I might want to try losing some of my like lower level memories soon, but we'll have to see. All right, so let's see. Maybe... I feel like... This might... No, it's not good enough. Oh my gosh. Phew. Okay, we're gonna have to rearrange this, I think. I'm not gonna get quite the number bonus I wanted, maybe? But, um... Let's try... This? Oh, jeez, just barely. Okay. I need to, like, continue to work really hard to be able to accomplish that. Yeah, getting a little stressed, but we finally have the 20 biology! How time. Oh wow, and it's a whole new season now. Tang, what do you think about this? Tangent is watching a construction crew build scaffolding for the new engineering pavilion. They're using mush wood, which is so light that one person can easily lift a 10 meter long pole and stack it into place. She points towards them. Human beings are so great, don't you think? Before we landed, this was all just dirty jungle. Now, it's civilization. I've been learning about adaptability in writing and biology class. The books say it's what sets us apart from the animals. Like we don't need fur because we can make warm clothes, and if it's too hot, we can make air conditioners instead. Uh, also we can sweat. Yay, yeah, from biology 15 or greater. Tang nods vigorously. Yes, also that. I read that not many animals sweat except humans, and it makes us naturally good in hot places. It means we're, it's like we're made to be explorers. Oh, I love that. Together, you watch as the foreman puts the blueprints for the scaffolding onto the floating screen of her hollow palm, then raises it to the scaffolding to check their progress. I'd like to see an alien do that, Tang says primly. Humans look defenseless and weak, but we're the strongest species in the galaxy. Who else can literally bend reality to their will? Not a stupid alien, that's for sure. She puts one finger to her chin. I'm living proof that humanity is greater than our biology, she says. All of us are, really, with our genetic enhancements. We're the next step in humanity's evolution from great ape to galactic super species. Oh man. Okay, she might be going a little bit the mad scientist route, but she has my full and complete excited attention. I'm not gonna lie. Oh boy. And then let's see. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then is just happy because she can run all over the place on the farms. Hey, Kel. And then he doesn't feel- Oh, hey, we have the nature fact finally! Yes! Cal is scratching a stick listlessly into the dirt, seeming uninterested in your presence until you get right into his face. 
Oh, hey, Solceria, he says, mustering up a hollow smile. Sorry, I don't really feel like playing today. So let's tell him a cool nature fact then. You recently overheard the children learning how to count by studying hop eyes. Oh, look at how cute! Oh my gosh! One hop eyes have one foot and two teleforks and three stomachs and four eyes. And if you see five of them together, that's lucky, Cal laughs, finishing off the mnemonic with you. Wait, how did they find out that hop eyes have three stomachs? I want to know. Yay! Okay, that made him happy. Oh, oh man, I can't follow anyone. It's pouring rain and everyone's trying to stay dry under the grass roof palpas. Everyone except dies. Off in the distance, he's over near the wall near the sports ball field. He's definitely skulking. Oh boy. Oh man, quietly follow him. Ah, I need better perception. I'm going to tell someone. I really think it's important. You tell security chief Rhett that you saw Dai's up to no good behind the garrison. He's too distracted trying to put buckets under various leaks of the roof to pay much attention. Thank you, Solceria. I'll check it out later, he says, waving you off. If there's a danger to the colony, one of the lookouts will catch it. You're not so sure. You know Dai's. He's very good at hiding when he doesn't want to be found. Oh boy. Dai's, you're gonna get yourself, like, killed? Oh, hey, Dad. Oh! You spot your dad playing cards with two of the other agriculturalists. You don't recognize the game, but you watch your dad throw down his hand and groan, then peel off his shirt and toss it in the pot. I'm literally losing my shirt over here, he says, and his two friends laugh uproariously. Your dad wipes his eyes, chuckling, then sees you. Oh, hey, Solceria. You need something? Oh, that's so cute. And then, oh, Mushwood! Yes. And then mom is still doing her work. Can I say anything to you about geophonics? Okay, yeah, it's just the same. Oh, she takes she, oh she takes a long look at you up and down. You're growing fast, Lucyria. But oh yeah, no no, that's still still doing the normal stuff. Thanks, mom. All right, Mars, you're still on my like I'm not happy with you list. But how are you doing? Yep, she's just bored today. <sighs> well, all right. I think maybe we might take a day to relax with this new season and then try to figure out what we want to work on next because part of me really wants to continue to develop in our biology especially in case those little notches at the like those three notches on the skills happen to be important or not but then another part of me really wants to work on building up our bravery and our perception I feel like that might be really important but I guess that's just the trouble of being young and trying to figure out how to live a good life. There's just so much to do and you just don't know where to like put your energy or how what you do will help you grow. But we'll just have to do our best. So alright my friends, thank you for joining us. If you could, do please leave a like for all of the amazing purple mushrooms. And if you'd like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, stay curious. Bye bye